Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Friday, the 3rd of December. Today, the church is remembering Francis Xavier, who was a missionary and is pastor of the Apostles to the Indies. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about him. Uh, so he was uh, born in um, Francesco de um, um, Hacio de Azepulusia, uh, which um, on the 7th of uh, April uh, uh, 1506 in uh, um, Javier or Xavier, uh, in, which was in, then in the kingdom of Navarra, uh, which is now partly in um, present-day Spain and partly in present-day France. And he died this day in 1552 on Shangchuan Island, uh, which is part a uh, part of China. Um, so he is uh, was a missionary. He was one of the first founding Jesuits, um, and uh, was a uh, 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 an associate and a companion of uh, um, Saint Ignatius of Lyoto, uh, who founded the Jesuits as well. Um, so he, um, as I said, he he was um, part of the part of the original Jesuits. He then um, led extensive mission uh, missionary work into Asia. Uh, mostly within what was then the uh, Portuguese Empire, which takes in a large sway of uh, of India and various other countries, um, and uh, um, he was given um, given a letter uh, by uh, to uh, by jo uh, so to um, by the King of Portugal um, to be a special mission uh, minister whose sole office would be to further uh, Christianity in Goa, and so large numbers of churches who would link their faith back to St. Francis, uh, Francis Xavier. Um, he then uh, went into, he was the first Christian missionary to go into Japan, into Bornin and the uh, Maluku Islands, as well as other areas. But he faced uh, many challenges, struggling to learn the local language and also facing local opposition. Uh, so he had less success there than he had in India. And he was on his way to China um, to um, to, uh, to lead a, um, a mission out there when he died on the Shunkum Island. He was then beatified in 1619. Um, and so, yeah, so let me tell you, uh, so he's got various patronages. He has the, he's the patron saint for African missions uh, for Kota, Agatala, Amamabad, uh, Bo um, Beruglu, uh, Bombay, uh, various uh, Goa, uh, just trying to find all the Indian ones, trying to clip through those together. Uh, Cablanca, uh, I think that's all. And I think that's all of the Indian places which claim his uh, his patronage. Uh, he's also the patron saint of Borneo, of Cape Town, South Africa, uh, of China, uh, of uh, Dinajpur uh, in Bangladesh. Um, he's uh, uh, also uh, for missionaries, uh, missionaries of the precious blood. So various patronages all kind of linking around to his missionary work, which is very good. So we shall pray for all who are called to uh, missionary work today. We shall pray for one another. Um, and just before we begin, just to say um, there's lots going on this weekend, um, which I've already mentioned I mentioned uh, yesterday. We're going to mention it again just to make sure we get the, uh, the news out there, which is um, t uh, tomorrow, Saturday, from 11 o'clock onwards, there'll be the... St Nicholas Fair um, in St Mary's and Datchet and that will be followed by Christmas on the Green um, outside as well. Please do wear masks if you're coming into the church. There'll be signposts up for that, but please do um, put the, please do wear masks where you can. Um, and then on Sunday we'll have at 8 a.m. a BCP Holy Communion at St Mary's, 9.30. We'll have the main Eucharist at St Mary's um, and, uh, and then at 11 o'clock, that will be streamed online as well. Then at 11 o'clock, we'll be at St. Thomas's for the um, Eucharist there. Um, and after the Eucharist at St. Thomas's, about 12 o'clock onwards, um, do gather for uh, to, with a picnic. And we will be making wreaths in the afternoon as well. So there's an awful lot going on, which is really rather exciting. Um, so please do come to as much of that as you are able to. Uh, and it'd be lovely to see you where you can. So, um, but obviously, if you're coming into church, to either churches for any of the events, please do wear a mask, especially for services while singing as well. Uh, we don't want anybody else getting sick. It's an absolutely necessary. But as we come together, let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praised and glory forever. 
in your tender compassion, the door from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadow of night. As we look for your coming amongst us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The earth is the Lord and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all that who dwell therein. For he has found it upon the seas and set firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the, of the Lord? Or who can rise up to his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up to your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up to your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night is past, the daylight is open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this morning is Psalm 25. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. But let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will teach the humble in doing right, and teach his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to those who keep his covenant and his testimony. For your name's sake, O Lord, be merciful to me, to my sin, for it is great. Who are those who fear the Lord? Them will he teach in the way that they should choose. Their souls shall dwell at ease, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The hidden purpose of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I alone I am alone and brought very low. The sorrows of my heart have increased. O oh, bring me out of my distress. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sin. Look upon my enemies, for they are many, and they bear a violent hatred against me. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have put my trust in you. Let, it, let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. Our second psalm for this morning is Psalm 26. Lord. I love the place where your glory abides. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have walked with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked in your truth. I have not joined the company of the false, nor consorted with the deceitful. I hate the gathering of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocent, O Lord. 
that I may go about your altar to make her the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house of your habitation and the place where your glory abides. Sweep me not away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, those whose hands are full of wicked schemes and their right hands full of bribes. As for me, I will walk with integrity. Redeem me, Lord, and be merciful to me. My foot stands firm. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, I love the place where your glory abides. Our Old Testament reading is a continuation of the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 29, verses 1 to 14. O Ariel, Ariel, the city where David encamped, add year to year, let the festivals ro run their round. Yet I will distress Ariel, and there shall be moaning and lamentation, and Jerusalem shall be to me like an Ariel, and like David I will encamp against you. I will besiege you with towers and raise siege works against you. Then deep from the earth you shall speak. From low in the dust your word shall come. Your voice shall come from the ground like the voice of a ghost, and your speech shall whisper out of the dust. But the multitude of your foes shall be like fine dust, and the multitude of tyrants like flying chaff. And in an instant and suddenly you will be visited by the Lord of hosts, from the thunder and earthquakes and great noise, with whirlwinds and tempests and flame of a devouring fire. And the multitude of all the nations shall fight against Ariel, all the fight against her and her stronghold and who distress her shall be like a dream, a vision of the night. Just as when a hungry person dreams of eating and wakes up still hungry, or a thirsty person dreams of drinking and wakes up faint, still thirsty, so shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Stupefy yourselves and be in a stupor. Blind yourselves and be blind. Be drunk, but not from wine. Stagger, but not from strong drink. For the Lord has poured out upon you a spirit of deep sleep, and has closed your eyes, you prophets, and covered your heads, O seers. The vision of all this has become to you like the words of a sealed document. It is given to those who can read, and with the command, read this. And they say, We cannot, for it is sealed. And if it is given to those who cannot read, saying, Read this, they say, We cannot read. The Lord said, because these people draw near with their mouths and honour me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their worship of me is a human commandment learnt by rote, so I will again do amazing things for this people, shocking and amazing. The wisdom of their uh, wisdom shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning shall be, bitter, shall be hidden. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lift up your voice with strength. O herald of good tidings, the wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not, your God is coming with judgment, coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a heart and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The ransoms of the Lord shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. Our New Testament reading is a continuation of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 to 43. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sows good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weed amongst the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the, wheat appear the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good wheat in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answers, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? 
but he replied no. For, uh, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot. So the weeds, you would uproot the wheat amongst them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burnt, but gather the wheat to my barns. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree. So the birds of the air come and make nests in it and in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until it was, it was leavened. He, Jesus told the crowd all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth and speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowd and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parables of the weeds in the fields. He answers, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, and the good seeds are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will be they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and e all evildoers, and will throw them into the furnace of the fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now is the time to awake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day, and the day is at hand. Now is our first salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the glory that is coming from God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, for the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you charge to be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Look towards the east of Jerusalem, and see the glory that is coming from God. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for the day that lies ahead of us. We pray, Lord, that you would be with us, that you would guide us, help us, and keep us. Show us the path that you would wish us to take. Help us to show your love in all we do and say and think. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all who are making preparations for this weekend. For those who are organising for the St Nicholas Fair and Christmas on the Green. For those who are making final preparations for the wreath making on Sunday. We give thanks and pray for all who are making preparations through Advent to celebrate the arrival of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you would watch over us, guide us and keep us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray and give thanks for your servant, uh, Francis Xavier, for his missionary spirit, his commitment to you, for those who he brought Christ to. We pray for all who are claiming patronages of him. We pray for all who are Christians throughout the world, 
particularly in India and in Asia. We pray for those who have yet to hear your word, Lord, that they may come to know you and to love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for all being affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are sick at this time. We pray for those who are anxious and worried, for those who are in need of hospitalisation. And we pray for all who have died. Heavenly Father, we pray for your for those who are caring for us, for those who are caring for the sick, for those who are in need of your strength, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for peace in this world, for an end to violence and an end to injustice. We pray for all peoples who have had to flee their homes, their families and their livelihoods. We pray for those who are in refugee camps, for those who are in need of your, of your support, for those who are seeking asylum, for those who are making dangerous crossings and are at the mercy of gangs. Help us, Lord, to show kindness and compassion to those who are in need. Help us not to close our hearts, but to recognise our common humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray for those who are known to us. We pray for all who are suffering with mental health issues, for those who are awaiting treatment, for those who are hospitalised, for those who are recovering from surgery. We pray especially by name for Davy, Jilly, Megan, Ella, Mary, Tina, Robert, David, Peter, Robert, Rose, Bailey, Sarah, Gwenna, David, Helen, Mary, Gillian, and Matthew. We pray too for those who are known to you alone, Lord, for those who are suffering in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those who are reaching the end of their lives and those who recently lost their lives. We pray especially at this time for Doreen and for Bert. We pray for their families who are mourning their loss, for those who are in need of comfort, and we pray for all who carry the scars of loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So just a quick reminder that tomorrow we'll have at, in Datchet um, the St Nicholas Fair in the church. And this will also be followed by uh, Christmas on the Green. And then on Sunday we'll have at 8am a BCP Holy Communion at St Mary's. And that will be followed at 9.30 by the main Eucharist at St Mary's, which will also be streamed online. And then at 11 o'clock we'll be at St Thomas's for the Eucharist there. Following the Eucharist at, a, at about 12 o'clock onwards, um, please do join for a picnic. Uh, please do bring uh, some food for yourselves. And uh, we will then be um, doing some wreath making in the afternoon. And we hope you, as many of you as possible can join us.
So there's a lot going on over the weekend, so do join where you can, and we look forward to seeing you at whatever way you can do so. But until we see each other again, God bless, stay safe, and have a lovely day.